Okay, hello everyone. This is Mr. Hayworth back with you, and we're going to be looking at putting finishes on metal today. And so I have a couple samples of metal. I want to talk about some different uh, sort of concepts in, in putting finishes on and what the surface preparation is. Um, so we have a few products here. We're going to be talking about painting. So I have some primer. This is some spray on primer, but there is brush on primer. Um, of course, spray paint. I want to make sure that students know how to spray paint well. Um, a lot of times students don't. This is some brush on paint, and in particular, this is made for metal. It's called Rust Stop. So if you had something that was a little bit rusty, this seals it off and prevents it from getting a, a little bit rustier. Um, then we have some lacquer. So we're going to be talking about putting this on there if you actually want a clear finish on your piece of metal and why you might want a clear finish on a piece of metal. We're also going to talk a little bit about surface preparation. So I have a Scotch-Brite pad here. We'll see what that's like. Um, I have a wire brush here with some leaves on it apparently. And we're going to see about uh, using a wire brush, how that works. Of course I have safety glasses. Um, oh, I need to get some gloves. Uh, but we also have some paint thinner some acetone and some lacquer thinner. And honestly, I, I didn't have what I really wanted to have. I'm, I'm doing this video at home, but in the shop, I like to have denatured alcohol around because of the kinds of solvents that you can use with paint that dissolve oils and work really well for that. These are relatively bad for you. Acetone's really bad for you and lacquer thinner isn't much better and paint thinner is, you know, it's, it's the least bad of these three, but much, much safer would be something like denatured alcohol. Still, uh, you will do just fine by seeing how to uh, clean and prep a surface with this, and you can use the denatured alcohol in the classroom. Again, my purpose for doing these videos is so that when we get back to school, I don't have to teach you this. You should be ready to put finishes on things when you need them and know everything that you need to do. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I have here is a piece of brass. And this piece of brass, I left some of it oxidized, but on this side, I used a Scotch-Brite wheel on, a, on an angle grinder. Um, so it's the same stuff, but it's just in a disc. And I ran it on there and you could see it's nice and shiny. It gets much more yellow as it oxidizes over time so you know you can continue polishing this with with finer and finer abrasives uh, or you can just leave it and it would eventually turn this color if you did want it to stay this color though you want to prevent it from oxidizing so that means that you need to prevent it from coming into contact with oxygen in the air so what we're going to do is we're going to lacquer this and lacquer uh, is usually a sprayed on product. Uh, it dries relatively quickly. It is uh, as colorless and clear as anything out there. Um, and it works really well for something like uh, a metal like this that you want to remain polished outside or, or even inside. It'll just kind of prolong that polished look. It doesn't last forever. Um, something to know is that this is brass, but you could also use lacquer on a piece of aluminum. You could use lacquer on a piece of stainless steel. Uh, you wouldn't really need to do that on stainless steel because it does not oxidize. It, it actually oxidizes really, really slowly, but uh, you don't necessarily need to do that. You could also use this on steel, and I've done that quite a bit uh, where I just wanted kind of an industrial look. Um, so I have actually a gate in the background that I'm going to be using as an example for painting and priming. Uh, but if I wanted it to be like that bare metal, I could spray it with lacquer. However, steel is the most prone to rust of the different metals that I've mentioned, or the most prone to oxidize. Lacquer is not going to protect it for long, so it will end up looking oxidized um, within a year. Okay, I'm going to grab some gloves and we're going to resume. Okay, we're back. We're going to be talking about uh, putting some lacquer on this piece of brass to start with. Um, yes, I did polish that up with a uh, Scotch-Brite wheel on a grinder. I could use some Scotch-Brite and I can 
maybe buff this some more and I'm gonna just spray this um, however when I go to spray this, I want to make sure that the surface is clean. I'm going to be using some lacquer thinner here. Um, again, this stuff is kind of nasty. Uh, one of the things that I didn't mention in that initial part is you could also use some Windex. Uh, window cleaner works really, really well. Here's the acetone on here. And this is a really good job of dissolving oils. So that way my lacquer is going to stick a little bit better. Uh, so this lacquer has a little metal ball in it. And me being not such a nice person, I sometimes jokingly tell students, yeah, you need to shake that until the little ball inside dissolves and it doesn't rattle anymore. That completely is not true, but it is a fun little prank. And let's pretend that I've just been shaking this for a minute. A minute would be a good amount of time. I'm going to put some finish on here and I'm going to be relatively quick. I don't want to put too much on there. If I did put too much on, then it could actually start to run. Lacquer really has a tendency to run because um, it actually melts previous coats of lacquer. So if you had a project that you decided you wanted to put five coats of lacquer on, you actually only have one coat of lacquer on it um, because each coat melts into the previous coats and the reason why that's such a big danger is if you did have five coats on there especially if it was on a vertical surface and you hit it with just a little bit too much lacquer then all of a sudden you have a landslide and we call that a sag or a run i'm going to take this and just like i've shown you in spray painting before i'm going to start off of the piece and i'm going to stop off of the piece and you go kind of quick and you're almost kind of just dusting might be able to see it change just a little bit in appearance, but I can also see it uh, already even evaporating. So it has a nice shiny finish to it. Anyway, that's how you would put a clear finish on a piece of metal. Very similar to putting a clear finish on a piece of wood. Okay, so this is our project that we're gonna use for um, cleaning metal preparing the service, and then painting. This is a gate, a uh, frame to a gate that I that I welded up. Um, so I wanna clean up my welds a little bit, and I also wanna remove the surface oils from the um, metal itself. So um, to clean up the welds, I'm using my trusty wire brush. Once I'm done, cleaning up all these welds. Then I'm gonna take a Scotch-Brite pad and some paint thinner or lacquer thinner. Or if you're at school, you're gonna be using the denatured alcohol. And I'm gonna wipe this whole thing down and clean that surface. And I'm also gonna wipe it down with paper towels when I'm done. Okay. That's been wiped down. It is uh, really pretty clean. Um, I think you could probably scrub that for hours and hours and hours and hours and still be removing some of the grime from it. Metal straight from the uh, uh, mill has uh, a lot of grime on it. Um, you're never gonna remove it all, but all of that grime is gonna be working against you, preventing you from trying to uh, get paint to stick. So now I'm gonna shake this up really good and I'm gonna start priming this. Okay, so I just shook that up really good. Um, I am not gonna to try to prime all of this all in one coat. Uh, the key to successfully spray painting stuff is to do several light coats. And so I'm not looking to completely cover the metal. Instead, I want it to be more like a fog or a haze on there that I can maybe build up even this primer, certainly the paint, but even the primer, I can build that up in two or three coats. You also wanna hit things like the open ends of tubes. I do have some caps that cover these, but it doesn't hurt to shoot a little bit of primer inside in case any water gets in there, it'll prevent a little bit of rusting. Always try to keep the can upright when you're spraying. Don't spray upside down and limit the amount that you're spraying horizontally. So with a flat surface like this, I'm actually gonna try to spray at a downward angle 
from both sides instead of spraying straight down. Okay, now one of the things I need to do is I need to spray the inside of all these. And you have to be careful because that usually has you leaning from one side to another. You don't want to rub your clothes up against the wet paint there. Okay, so that is not thoroughly covered. It is, I would say, 75% covered. I can certainly uh, see some of the black coming through from the metal underneath. I wanna make sure that I let this tack up. And what happens as that gets tacky, uh, it's gonna be more able to stay in place as it accepts more paint. So I'm going to uh, wait just maybe five minutes and then I'm going to spray it again to make sure that I fill in everything that I can. And then I'm going to let that dry uh, so it's completely dry. Then I'm going to flip this thing over and I'm going to spray the fourth side that I couldn't get to. Well, good morning. I am wiping down this uh, gate that I primed yesterday. Um, I ran out of the primer that I used the first time that was kind of this army green color and I use a different primer. I'm trying to do this on the cheap using what I have so I don't have to go visit a store. Um, so I use a different primer. It's black. It doesn't matter. It, it'll work great. It probably is a better primer than the one I first used so maybe I should have used it to begin with. <laughs> So as far as paint, I could use a brush on paint. I have a couple cans of this, uh, uh, okay that's one really loud bird, a couple cans of this uh, bronze color and we have another gate that also is this color so I'm going to use this to spray paint everything. Same as yesterday, light coat, let it tack up. And then you could put a heavier coat on about 10 minutes after the first one. Here it goes. Okay, um, we have the first coat on here, just kind of a nice light coat. It's dried for a few minutes and now I'm going to come back and I'm going to hit it with uh, same paint, just a little bit heavier. Um, just a couple reminders when you do this have the spray can about six to eight inches away from the surface uh, and be really mindful that you're not putting too much paint in one area uh, keep moving don't start spraying in the middle of a part because what happens is it generally shoots a blob of paint in the beginning you want to be moving when you when you push on the little button um, and go light go light don't put on paint too heavy also make sure it's shaken up 